Hello and welcome to the Money Talk COVID-19 Daily Bulletin for Friday, June 12th. I'm Anthony Okolia. In a few minutes, I'll be speaking with Michael Craig, Head of Asset Allocation at TD Asset Management, about the recent volatility in equity markets. But first, a quick wrap of today's headlines. Lululemon missed earnings and revenue expectations for the first time in three years, despite a 68% jump in online sales, as store closures during the COVID-19 pandemic took a bite out of profits. The European Union antitrust regulators have set a July 16th deadline for a decision on whether to clear French high-speed trade maker Alstom's bid for Canada's Bombardier's rail business. The UK economy contracted a record 20.4% in April as a result of the COVID-19 lockdown measures, wiping out nearly two decades' worth of growth. Finally, bankrupt auto rental company Hertz wants to sell as much as $1 billion of new stock to take advantage of the recent surge in its share price. And that's a wrap of today's headlines. Next, my conversation with Michael Craig. Michael, markets are up right now, but yesterday was an ugly day for Wall Street and uh, Bay Street. Stock markets posted the worst day since March. The Dow closed down nearly 7%. What caused the sell-off? Yeah, there's, a, I guess, a couple of things. Um, first off, we've had a pretty uh, amazing rally off the lows. Uh, the S&P touched just under 2,200 back in March. It was 1,000 points higher, uh, call it 45%. I've got to be honest, the last 200 points uh, seemed a bit excessive. Uh, and it's always hard to pin the point of when you're actually going to see these sell-offs. But I think this was, a, in my opinion, a healthy correction. Uh, we were starting to get a bit frothy, a bit of excess. Uh, and it's actually, you know, while it's a painful experience to go through, probably a healthy, healthy correction in the backdrop of a very strong rally uh, over the past three months. I guess a big question now is, was that a one-time drop or could we see potentially more declines going forward? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly the the markets are highly sensitive to news flow right now. It has gotten a bit more uh, bleak uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, certainly, a, a, a slight pullback from here wouldn't be hugely out of expectations. Though the market is rallying pretty strongly today, I would say though, uh, what makes today much different than say March is the information about COVID nineteen is is out there. We have a much better understanding about what we're dealing with. Uh, and two, that the fiscal and monetary support is still in full force. Powell recommitted to that this week at the Fed meeting. And therefore, we have a tremendous amount of both fiscal support through government policy and monetary support through quantitative easing. The Fed is still buying about $50 billion a week of assets. Uh, this is a trend, trend, tremendously accommodative policy. And so that uh, that will likely lead to uh, higher markets over the over the medium term. Yesterday, of course, we saw the volatility index trade above 40 for the first time since early May. Should investors brace for more volatility ahead? Well, I think in the, given the backdrop of what's happening right now, and let's say three kind of key things, there's COVID-19, there's ongoing geopolitical tensions, and there is, I think, uh, tremendous uncertainty about uh, the fall election in, in the United States. There are events that should keep volatility higher. Um, from our perspective, tactically, we've actually been using this volatility to monet- monetize it and, and use it as an opportunity to actually add add value uh, through the high vol because we don't think markets are actually going to realize the level of volatility over the longer period of time. So I, I think a higher, a higher vol environment is likely here to stay for some time. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, again, if you, if, you, if you just bought stock a year ago and then just ignored the market of the last year, you wouldn't have really felt much volatility. It's really been a, a shorter term phenomenon that we've been, uh, we've been witnessing. And are you looking to add to positions during these dips or is there something that you're, something that you're watching for before you get more bullish? Um, we're, we would certainly be buyers on pullbacks. Uh, we have been uh, overweight equities now for some time although managing our P&L quite closely. So when markets do kind of leap forward, we haven't taken profit and not getting too over our skis, if you will. Um, but we would certainly be buyers of dips um, if we do fall, uh, you know, another five, 10% or so. I uh, don't see a whole lot of downside here with, with, the, with the accommodation in place. Uh, and so this is definitely, I think, a market to be bought on weakness, not a market to be sold on strength right now. The Fed this week gave a whole new meeting to lower for longer. Uh, they indicated that rates will be at near zero through 2022, and actually could be longer than that. 
Uh, they actually said that they'll keep rates down until the U.S. is back on track to max employment. How big a reality check was it that the economy is in deep trouble and the recovery won't be swift? Well, we've been telling advise, uh, our investors for some time now that we would expect the Fed to be uh, on hold for some time. And I think Powell just reaffirmed that. He kind of went out of his way to, to say that they were going to be um, near zero without actually giving explicit forward guidance like Bernanke did um, uh, back in the early 2010s. Um, and, and so there's a few things the markets were looking for. Uh, one would be yield, yield curve control where they pin the market lower. And the second would be um, uh, for guidance, neither of which he actually committed to. And so that's why there was a lot of dovish, love, dovish talk. I think the key message from the Fed this week is that from the economy standpoint, uh, things are certainly still quite bleak and that the Fed would be, remain accommodative for, for years to come. And for us, that was the key takeaway uh, from his statement that, that, that we are not going to be dealing with uh, quantitative tightening or monetary tightening uh, for, for a long time uh, going forward. And finally, as head of the asset allocation team for TD Asset Management, what strategies are you using to ride out the economic recovery? So we look at things from a variety of timeframes. Our uh, shorter term tactical team has been using this monetized and volatility, uh, rotating throughout sectors uh, for a while. We were looking at kind of the early recovery sectors and more recently have rotated back into tech. Uh, for our kind of more medium term strategies, we are very much in the camp of uh, either wanting quality companies, companies with strong balance sheets and they're with, with limited, if not zero default risk and or companies that are geared to structural trends. We think that you continue to ride that structural growth trend, whether it be uh, typically in technology and in some cases healthcare. I think those are the sectors that are going to perform uh, quite well in the, uh, not so much over the next quarter, but over the next, uh, you know, three to five years. And I think that's where, the, where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Michael, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure to be with you.